Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I received this box from Lissetti. If you have a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and you're thinking to yourself, man, I really wish I would have just bought a power station. This might be your answer. So let's open it up and see what we got. Okay, and what we have is the Lissetti battery box. I believe it's a thousand watt AC inverter battery box that you could just put a battery in and kind of convert a battery to a power station. Okay, and here's what comes in the box. You have your Lacity battery box, you have your user manual, and then you have a bag full of different types of uh, connectors it looks like. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. First of all, we need to talk about the dimensions outer and inner dimensions of this because you don't want to have a battery that's too big. Okay, the outer dimensions of this uh, battery box, it is 17.97 inches in length. The width of this battery box is 9.44 inches and the height is 12.99 inches, so almost 13 inches in height. All right, and then the internal dimensions are 13.19 inches in length, 7.87 inches in width, and the internal height is 9.44 inches. The manual does say that this can hold a 70 amp hour to a 130 amp hour lead acid battery, which would be groups 24, 27, and 31, and a 70 amp hour to 200 amp hour lithium battery. Okay, it does say that it can fit up to a 200 amp hour battery, but I don't think that means the dimensions, because here I have a 200 amp hour battery uh, from watt cycle and you can see the case The case is way too small for this battery. So I really think it's the the internals that can only support up to 200 amps So let's go ahead and look at the internals of this uh, battery box Okay, and here is the lid to the battery box and here is what is on the bottom of it right here is the main circuitry for the AC inverter, which is a thousand watt inverter. Um, you also have your uh, your DC 12 volt plugs right here. I, be, I believe these two are the USBs and this is a 12 volt cigarette lighter style. Uh, right here is the, uh, the on off switch. Uh, this is the circuitry for the uh, display and the, uh, the, the mode buttons. And then we have our Anderson connectors over here. We have the big 175 amp uh, connector and uh, the 50 amp connectors right here and then you can see down here there is a red and green a red and green wire that go to this uh, solar charge controller right here which is an MPPT and then over here you just see the circuitry for the for the outlet and and the fan so that is all on the top of the of the battery box case and then we have our cabling that goes to the batteries right here. And these do look like four gauge cables. They don't have any markings on them to tell me otherwise. And actually comparing it to this four gauge cable right here, it looks to be a little thicker, but uh, it could be just the insulation. Uh, the wiring going to the uh, 50 amp uh, Anderson connectors looks to be 10 gauge. And it looks like the 175 amp connector is uh it looks like to be another four gauge cable right there okay so let's go ahead and put a battery in here and start it up and see what it does and the battery that we're going to be using is this red odeo low temp 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery okay and if you look at the bottom there is a strap that will actually hold the battery in place so we're going to kind of keep these straps out let's go ahead and and it is velcro which is nice All right, and it fits right in. Uh, you know, this strap, uh, I don't think it's gonna get in the way, but I really, I don't, I, wa I wanna keep this strap on here because it makes it super easy to lift out. If you don't have that strap in, it's just a little bit more difficult. So let's just go ahead and strap it all in. Okay. And I do notice that this battery, it's kind of a, it's kind of crooked in there. So it doesn't quite fit, you know, it doesn't quite fit perfectly, but it's, 
it's not going anywhere. So that's the most important part is that it's going to stay in here. And actually with this strap, we could probably just go like this and just put it down here. All right, there we go. Okay, uh, while I was taking the tape off of these uh, battery connectors right here, I happened to be looking at this MPPT right here and I noticed that there is a temperature sensor. So I want to see if this sensor um, is like a cold, a cold charging sensor right here. So it won't charge if it's too cold. So we'll test that in a little bit. And we'll test the, the hot side as well to see if it stops charging from the solar. Uh, I don't think this will have anything to do with if you plug it directly into a, a 50 amp or your big 175 amp connector. It, since those are going to bypass everything else, it's going to bypass the MPPT. So you won't have cold charging protection from if you plug directly into these. But I think through solar, you might. So we'll test that in a little bit. Okay, and I just kind of put it up like this. Let's go ahead and take these off. And since it's a, a thousand watt inverter, I'm not going to worry about uh, using a pre-charged resistor or anything like that. I'm just going to connect it on. Oh, no spark whatsoever. So that's good. All right. I guess we can put it down here. All right. And let's try to just fit this on here and see what happens. Pretty easy, actually. Besides the fact that the, the lid kind of flopped around a little bit, but that's no big deal. Okay, uh, this other this other baggie also came with screws to screw down the lid. It came with like some sort of, uh, I mean, it looks like a ratchet strap. Oh yeah, so it probably goes across like this, so you can strap it down. Uh, it also came with uh, battery uh, battery terminal covers, so. I should have probably put those on. Uh, it also came with it also came with four wood screws, which I'm guessing. Oh, okay. See, you put this strap on, and then the strap goes like this, and it straps down onto your onto the base, and then you use these screws to screw this in. So it's basically going to hold hold the battery down to the uh, you know, to the flooring of your battery compartment. They really came up with uh, everything to be able to fit this into a compartment so it stays, it stays put. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, battery switch is on. Turn this on. And there we go. All right, and the display says 123. And the light is on AC voltage, so let's go ahead and change the mode. Here's the AC wattage, which is zero because we have no load. And then we can look at the DC voltage, which is 13.3. So that's pretty nice. 123 volts AC, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty high, actually, which is good. I'll take it. Um, and then if you hold this down, It switches to mode two, and mode two will just uh, display all of the settings uh, throughout. So it'll kind of cycle through. Let's look at these, and they are lit up, which is nice. But yeah, that's nice. I like that how it's lit up, and you can turn these on and off. I got my extra battery for my uh, my camera right here. So let's go ahead and plug it in, and you can see the battery right there is starting to charge. So if we press this button, will it turn off? It will. So these, the buttons on here actually turn the, the DC ports on and off. So if you're not using them, you can turn them off to save power. So let's go ahead and turn those off. Okay, and another thing I want to show you is that you can turn these off and on uh, while the AC function is off. So you don't need to have this on in order for these to work. These will work regardless of whether this is on or not. So you can save a lot of power by not having the AC function on. Just like with any other typical uh, portable power station. 
Also, I do not believe these are regulated because they, the wiring inside shows that they basically go directly to the battery terminals. So they're gonna be the same voltage as whatever the battery is. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on the AC again and uh, plug something in and see if we can get a 500 watt load going to see how it handles it. Okay, I have uh, found a 500 watt heater here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on mode, mode two. So we can see that the AC is 123 volts. The wattage is zero because it's not on. And the battery is at 13.3 volts. So let's go ahead and turn this on. All right. The fan on the side has already kicked on. So it looks like it kicks on at 500 watts. Uh, it shows, let's see. The DC voltage is down to 12.7. The AC voltage is 118.3 and the watts are 470 watts being used by this heater, which is pretty accurate. Because once this heats up, it kind of, uh, it, it goes a little bit lower than 500 watts. And the display looks like it's lost like two bars right here. But it looks like it will run it. It'll run it just fine. This, the, the air on the side is nice and cool, so it's no big deal. And as soon as you turn off your load, the fan turns off as well. All right, the next thing that we're going to try is our new wave induction cooktop. We're going to go ahead and set it to 900 watts and we're gonna see if this can handle it for just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and go. Set this to high and start. Okay, our voltage has gone down to 113. It shows 900 watts and the battery is at 12.3. And this is uh, the display shows that the battery is uh, at half now. So this display, it must be judging the battery voltage. Okay, I've been running this for about a minute. I'm interested in seeing if it will shut off with a, an over wattage event. Cause it says it's only a thousand watt inverter. So I'm gonna kick this up to 1300 watts and we're gonna see what happens. All right, the unit starts beeping. It shows 1157 watts. The battery's at 11.8. All right, and it shut off. That is perfect. That's exactly what you want it to do if it is going over a thousand watts on your inverter. And now if we want to get it to turn back on, because right now it's still on, let's see if we could just turn this off and back on. Will it turn it on? And yes, it does. Everything, re everything resets if you just press the on off button right here. Okay, the next thing I want to show is that I have my 200 amp hour battery right here and I have it clamped onto, uh, I have the clamps and I have this uh, 50 amp Anderson connector connected to this. Now it doesn't show anything in the display that there's actually a charge going from this battery to this one, but if you have a, a, a clamp meter, you can see that there is, you know, six and a half amps going into this battery. So you can clamp an external battery to this and it will charge it. What I want to see is, I want to see is if I, if I plug in this, this heater, if it will draw more amperage from this battery, kind of like sharing it. So right now, let's, let's go ahead and zoom you in. Okay, hopefully you can, you can see that right now. It's pulling 6.2. But if I turn on this heater, will it actually pull more? And it does, look at that. So it's actually wired and it will share an external battery with the battery inside. So now I have 300 amp hours of available battery capacity 
and it's using both of them through this parallel connection right here. So that's, that's kind of a bonus right there. You can have an, a, an additional external battery connected to it. Okay, the next test is going to be with uh, the solar connection. I have my uh, variable voltage charger over here and I have it set to uh, 20 volts at five amps. So that's, you know, that's gonna be a 100 watt solar panel. Uh, you know, I don't know if there's 20 volt solar panels out there, but that's kind of what we're running with. And so I've got it connected to, with the uh, MC4 connectors that go to an, uh, an Anderson connector right here. So I'm just gonna plug this in and we're gonna see if anything changes. Okay, let's turn on the power supply. All right, and you can see the power supply. The MPPT uh, started figuring out what's the best it can do. Okay, so yeah, I had it set for 20 volts, but it looks like it's staying put at 17 volts and at five amps. So it is putting 85 watts into this battery right now. So the MPP solar charge controller does work just fine. Okay, the next thing is, I remember when I said this thing has a temperature sensor? Well, it's right here. And so I'm gonna use this ice pack to see if it will shut off the power going from our simulated solar panel over here. So let's go ahead and do the solar panel. Turn that on. And it looks like we're getting about 17, 17 and a half volts at five amps. So let's go ahead and try to chill this thing off and see if it works. I cannot get this thing to shut off. Uh, this sensor just must be a, a hot, a hot temperature sensor. All right. All right, now we're gonna try to heat it up and see if it shuts off then. Okay, yeah, this, uh, this, temperature, this temperature sensor is not doing anything. I can't, I can't get it to do anything. Okay, so what do I think of the LaCity battery box? You know, I kind of like it. Even though I couldn't get the temperature sensor on the MPPT to do, well, anything, it would keep charging whether I stuck an ice pack on it or put it basically inside of a heat gun. Uh, it just kept charging. But to me, that's really not that big of a deal. Um, I like the fact that you can just take a 100 amp hour battery, drop it in there, and all of a sudden you've got a portable power station. Uh, it has a lot of the things that you need when it comes to portable power stations. It has a thousand watt AC inverter. It has plenty of uh, USB-C and USB-A quick charge ports. Uh, it also has your 12 volt cigarette lighter port. Uh, it has a simple uh, display which will show you your battery voltage and the AC voltage that the, uh, the AC converter is using at the time. It also has uh, a bunch of Anderson connections. So if you need uh, a little bit higher amperage, uh, you have your DC high amperage connections on the side. I like the fact that the, they have the, the thought to have the battery strapped down inside and then have external straps that will bolt down to the, uh, the, the battery base, like the flooring. So that way this thing won't move. You can crank it down. You know, and it's also got carrying, carrying handles, so you can carry it around just like you would any other battery. I would say overall, this is a, a pretty good uh, battery to portable power station conversion kit. So if you have any questions about this LaCity 1000 watt AC battery box, please leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll have a link to this in my description so you can click on it and uh, look further into this product. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.